Here on 104.5 The Zone, welcome back to L.A. where we're hanging out. The site of Super Bowl 56. We told you we're going to have a lot of great guests throughout the course this week. We are joined now by former NFL wide receiver Torrey Smith, who sits down at the table with us. Torrey, it's good to catch up with you, boss man. Nice to see you. Appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, no doubt. So there's a there's a lot of hate between the Titans and the Ravens. Yes. This is a long stay, and I know you weren't just a Raven, uh-huh. but like this is going to create some tension here with the audience. You want you want to you want to poke poke Titans fans a little bit? You want to give them a little hell? I'm always willing to uh, to poke the bear a little bit. You know, <laughs> it's a robbery that obviously existed long before I was even drafted and I didn't even really understand it because we didn't really play that much when when um my during my time in Baltimore but yeah. like being a fan a young fan and watching that uh, Ray Lewis and just that defense going against the Titans I mean it, it was it was something that I remember just as a kid yeah. but now you know over the past few years it's a been, spicy. A, been a little something, something sprinkled on that and you know I'm all for for great rivalries funny thing is I actually met um coach Vrabel uh, I've, I've seen him a bunch of times, but, like, I was at the Pro Bowl last week. Yeah. And so I had the opportunity to talk to him. He's a damn good man. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't expect anything less than that. You know, yeah. pe- people sometimes confuse, like, a coach and their attitude. Like, he was awesome with my kids. Like, so if y'all had the opportunity to tell him that, tell him I love him. I have a lot of respect for him. Um, he's a damn good coach, too. They have a great team down there. But a robbery is only as good as the teams are. Yeah, And so the, both of these teams are really good right now, and I think I think it's fun for the fans. Yeah, Mike Vrabel, he's, he's an interesting cat. He actually just got a contract extension yesterday, so he's here in Tennessee to stay for quite some time. You've played in this game before, Torrey, a Super Bowl. You won a Super Bowl with the Baltimore Ravens, two Super Bowls. Uh, at the uh, w- Now, wait, where are the rings? I left them at home, no, man. I swear. I, I never wear them, and the only time you're supposed to wear them, like, you know, special dinners, dinners banquets, and the Super Bowl. And Dude. I left my rings at home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this, this is the time. And I, I, that's I like that's it. like Vrabel. Vrabel's got three of them. He, he, I, I'm pretty sure he said he's, his home got broken into and they just got stolen. Really? Like Mike doesn't even have the Super Bowl rings. Anyway. So wh- where are they? Are they they sitting in a case? At the no, game? I know where they are. Okay. They okay. just they just they just uh, didn't make the trip. They just didn't make the trip. I, I wasn't to be completely honest about my packing experience. I waited until the morning of. <laughs> <laughs> That's the honest truth. Hey, you know what? So I was trying to make my flight. I didn't even think about those rings. <laughs> Yo, I, th- I think that most people can identify that without question. But you you playing in the a- at the AFC North for as long as you did, like to see the Bengals in this game, man. Oh man, this seems like I don't know if that I don't know how that makes you feel a certain type of way because I know those rivalries run. To, uh, Ramon Foster hosts our morning show here on the radio <laughs> okay. station, former Steeler, so he's got plenty to say about the uh, about the Ravens and the Bengals. But to see them in this game, it's a foreign, a completely foreign concept to me. Yeah, you know, but I think it's really I think it's great for the game. You know, you talk about, I, I mean, I, I know the rivalries, right? You get all of that. Even if the Steelers were there, as much as I hate the Steelers, I'm like. Joe Hayden's one of my best friends. So, yeah. You know, those guys, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you want your guys to do well, sure. too, right? I'm able to look past that. But I think for this Bengals, I think it's great for the league. I say the Bengals are living every sorry team's dream. <laughs> <laughs> you get the number one pick, you get your quarterback, and next thing you know, you're in the Super Bowl. Like, it just doesn't happen. It literally hasn't happened. So I think it's great for the league. that, And it also gives fans hope. Puts a lot more pressure on whoever they pick. Yeah. However, it gives fans hope that it is possible. And I think when the underdog team, I think when the small market team, like the Titans, right? Like I think when they're doing well, I think it's great for everyone. No, there's no question. Super Bowl, two-time Super Bowl champion, Cor- uh, Tory Smith is here with us on 104.5 The Zone, live from Radio Row w- with Joe Burrow. Tory, man, when you guys won the Super Bowl, the, the first one different than the second, obviously, because the second with the Eagles, I mean, that whole situation was crazy to yes, see wow. how that season played out. But quarterback play always being the driving factor of this. Joe, different from Nick Foles at the time. Burrow and Stafford, completely different breeds entirely in the way that the game has evolved. We're, we're talking a lot about how important it is the quarterback position here in Tennessee because Tannehill, I mean, he blew it. He blew it against the Cincinnati Bengals. Three interceptions in that divisional round and route for them to get here. I don't know how to tell Titans fans that they can legitimately win with Ryan Tannehill, but then I look at guys like Joe and Nick who have done it different ways and think that it's it's not – you need elite quarterback play, but it's just about – at the right time, can a professional athlete get hot? 
Mm. And I think Joe and Nick are great examples of that. What was it like to live those two experiences? I mean, you're absolutely right. You know, I think I tell people all the time, um, the best team doesn't always win, the hottest team wins. And that's what that's why I wasn't so high on the Titans as the number one seed. Okay. All, simply because they weren't playing their best ball. Right? Like when they had that stretches during the season, I'm like, Oh yeah, they're this could be it, right? Yeah. But you have to be rolling at the back end. Everything has to be clicking on the back end. And I think if, if that's not the same, it's it's a lot harder. And you're able to see that. Obviously, the injury bug, you know, hit the team. Like, 91 uh, players, man. Right, you know, 91 the, players The, the injury year. bug, that's that's a real thing. I know people, coaches can't make excuses, but I can. That's a real, <laughs> that, that's a real thing, you sure. know. But when you're not rolling or you're not necessarily as healthy as you can be at the back end, it's tough. But, you know, I think living in two experiences, like, literally where we got hot, like, that's why those things were able to happen. Joe Flacco had the best Super Bowl run of any quarterback. I he, remember 11, I mean, 11 touchdowns, touchdowns zero, picks. zero picks. Yeah. So people can say whatever they want. Yeah. We wouldn't have won that Super Bowl without him playing that way. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that with Foles, we were stink. Like, when, when Carson went out, we didn't – like, guys were, like, in the city – it's funny how things change when you win, but people are like, oh, my goodness, we don't stand a chance. Yeah. And people forget Carson Wentz was one healthy game away from being the MVP. It's crazy how timing can change the narrative oh, of Oh, buddy, everything. I work in sports talk radio. <laughs> it changes by hour. Right. Are you it's, kidding it changes me? everything. And so, you know, for Foles to get hot and play the way he did, you know, it's amazing because the Falcons game, uh, um, Foles didn't play lights out. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because we won the game. So you get to the next – Level, you know, and watch him take off. I mean, it was it was huge, and to be a part of both runs and really to witness it all come together, it was truly special. Skill position. Tory Smith is here with us on 104.5 The Zone, and we're going to tell you he's uh, he's uh, here on behalf of the Black Women's Health Imperative, and and we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit about that here in just a second. But Jamar Chase at the wide receiver position. That was a conversation that was had a lot during the pre-draft process, yeah. right? Panay Sewell, Jamar Chase. They made the absolute right decision, even though <laughs> Joe Burrow is running for his damn life back there. Right. Tennessee has a good collection of skill position players. Julio Jones isn't at the peak of his powers anymore. But I wonder what you make of A.J. Brown at the mm. wide receiver position and how much – I mean, to us, Torrey and Tennessee, it seemed like they hurt – worse without A.J. than they did without Derrick Henry, who's an MVP candidate. They did. A.J. Brown's a real deal, man. I love his game. I love his attitude. Um, he's going to be a great one for a long time to come. I think the way he approaches the game, uh, he's a dominant. He's a true number one guy. And you add Julio. I wish Julio would have been healthy. I tell people, I tell, Julio has the resume from his first 10 years to say he's the best receiver to ever play. The Hall of Famer, without question. Truly. Like, and people are like, what do you mean by that? Go look at the numbers when he's healthy. There's no one statistically, that has been better than Julio Jones when he's been on the field. Now, I know part of being on the field be on is the a part of the thing. <laughs> However, you know, Julio overall, you know, he's, he's a heck of a player, man, and he's, he's, a, he's a great guy too. But I think for Brown, I think Tennessee really hit on him. Um, I think he's the right guy for that market, for that team, for that culture. And you can, he's a guy that you can build around. And you mentioned Derrick Henry. Obviously, Derrick Henry's not going to – receiver, he's going to be good at receiver for another 10 years. Yeah. You know, at, at the running back position – Shelf life. It, it, yeah, the, it, things come to a halt quickly. So, I think they're still in a true spot. I think Derrick Henry's is still in a great place right now. But I think that core, they've done an amazing job from building this team from the inside out. Torrey Smith is here with us on behalf of the Black Women's Health Imperative. Torrey, tell, tell us what you are here to promote and why this is such an important cause to you. Yeah, you're promoting the um, Black Women's Health Imperative. You know, it's extremely important to me because um, the first and only nonprofit that's focused on the health and wellness of African American women. Obviously, being an African American male, um, I was raised by my mother and my grandmother, and my grandmother actually is the primary reason for why I was so involved with this. Uh, they really promote screening. They wanted to get a million people screened during the football season. Um, and a lot of people don't get screened, especially in the African-American community. And my grandmother just rung her bell, finished up her cancer treatment last week. Congratulations, so, uh, man. That's fantastic. Due to early detection, she was able to really fight it. Now we'll see how the test results look in a few months. But things are looking really good right now. And obviously this is focused on African-American women. Um, but really everyone needs to get screened. Absolutely. All women, men too, right, because we all tend to wait until it's too late. And the reality of it is, the way technology is, there are a lot of things that can be detected if we simply get screened. So it's really just to promote that, continue to get screened, and you can learn more at bwhi.com. 
org, or you can just type it in Black Women's Health Initiative Imperative, and you can learn all the information that you need. Tori, I really appreciate you sitting down with us, and uh, and enjoy Super Bowl week. Enjoy the radio row. This is my first time out here. This seems more subdued than I was expecting. No, nah, wait, wait. It's okay. gonna get, it's gonna get cooking here soon. Now. Okay, it's gonna get cooking here soon. It's gonna be a lot of players uh, for me. My my one of my favorite memories by being on the other side of the fence was Radio Row. Like I'm walking and I see like some of my idols, you know. Yeah. I, I saw Barry Sanders. I'm like, oh, it's Barry Sanders. You know what I mean? Like really, like no. a fan. Like it's crazy the well, guys I mean, are coming through. I mean, not to be lame, but this is kind of one of those experiences for me because I was a freshman in college watching you guys win the Super Bowl with the Ravens <laughs> a couple of years ago. So this is this is no, it's crazy, been a really man. really cool experience. Uh, everyone's around you, man. You look around. Pat McAfee's right there beside you doing a whole set. Yeah, you, yeah, you got Debo Samuel right here. That's what I'm you saying. Know, Justin Pat's, Jefferson to be here in a second. I mean, Pat's crazy. close enough to drop the bag for us. I think you know he's got <laughs> that, that fan duel. Said. It looks pretty good. I think you I think you can. Uh, I think you can share the love. Corey, enjoy the week. We appreciate, hey, you, appreciate sitting you having down. me, man. Bridget Condon of the NFL Network is going to join us coming up next. I'm Buck Rising. It's 104.5 The Zone.